we started giving serious coverage to Intel Tiger Lake, their 11th gen mobile technology, back at the very beginning of 2020 at CES, and we've covered it a number of times subsequently. And Intel gave it a fair amount of coverage at their recent Architecture Day. There's not much more to say. We're feeling good about Tiger Lake, but we need to see how it performs in action. And then, just as Kit Guru and the rest of the tech press was ramping up for coverage of NVIDIA Ampere, RTX 3080 in the first instance, then 3090, 3070, and all the rest of them, we got a call from Intel. Tragically, we weren't able to record our call with Intel, so we've faithfully reconstructed it using all the technology at our disposal. Hey there, Leo, this is Intel calling. Hello, this is Leo. How's it going over there in England, Shire? Oh, busy. Very, very busy. Yeah, the weather ha Yeah, to be honest, I was just being polite. Question for you. How do you fancy doing a technical preview of 11th gen Tiger Lake? No, no, that sounds like a terrible idea. I cannot think of a single re I'll tell you what, you can run benchmarks. And yes, you can publish them. Fair enough. Send it over. Wow. The laptop we've been sent by Intel is an engineering sample. Intel said, we're not going to tell you who makes it. I think we can guess who makes it. This is clearly a version of a Prestige 14 from MSI, but it does not necessarily follow that MSI will launch a model exactly the same as this. My guess is that MSI will launch a Prestige 14 with an add-in graphics chip that is otherwise the same. The two limitations on this preview one, we're not allowed to do battery tests, or rather not allowed to publish battery tests. Uh, Intel says it's because the spec has not been finalized, therefore no point in quoting figures. If you're cynical or skeptical, you might wonder if power draws a bit on the high side, battery life not so good, therefore keep it quiet. Uh, that side of things we simply cannot comment on for a couple of weeks. The other thing is we can't show you inside the laptop to show you the cooling system. The curious thing is it's crystal clear to us the cooling system looks entirely conventional. However, that's Intel's rule, so we're going to stick with what they say. So here we have a brand new 11th gen Intel laptop. Here's a quick reminder, if you haven't subscribed, do it now or the Tiger gets it. The big deal with 11th gen Tiger Lake is a change to both the CPU cores and also to the graphics. The numbering system for the processor continues to be an absolute nightmare. This particular part is called Intel Core i7-1185G7. The last generation Ice Lake had, for example, Core i7-1065G7. We cannot honestly claim that this numbering system is significantly worse than the previous generation. It is worth pointing out that with 10th gen, the number after the G suffix told you precisely which version of the graphics you were getting. With 11th gen, eh, it's not quite so clear. It might mean this, or it might mean that. With this particular laptop we've got the full fat 96 execution units which is a massive leap compared to the previous best you could get with 10th gen a whole 50 percent extra and they run at higher clock speed at present intel has only given details of low power tiger lake processors up to 30 watts these are what used to be called u and y series processors they go up to four cores, as we just saw in the feeds and speeds table. Intel has also said on the record that they are developing up to eight core, what used to be H series processors for gaming laptops. So that would be up to 45 watts, we imagine, might be higher. So that's gonna be four, six and eight core processors with we assume eight, 12 and 16 threads. Those parts will, we understand according to rumors, have far fewer graphics shaders than these low power parts. Up to 32 execution units is the rumor for the highest end part, but of course a gaming laptop will always have an add-in graphics chip, therefore the onboard graphics are doing the minimum of work. That's the future. This is what we're looking at right now, which is a quad-core part rated sub 30 watts. And that's important because if we go back to the feeds and speeds table, we'll see the speeds, they are highly dependent on how much power you feed the part. With 10th gen Ice Lake, the parts could either run at 15 watts or 25 watts. There was that super special exclusive to Razer part that had 28 watts, but let's leave that out of the equation for the moment. 
we've got 15 watts and 25 watts and no matter what you did it would not go fast. Now here we are with 11th gen Tiger Lake and we've got extra speed and this is entirely down as far as we can see to Intel redesigning their super thin transistors. This is what lies behind Willow Cove. They call it a new architecture. As far as we can see what Intel has done is they fixed the 10th gen transistors for 11th gen. They now seem to work correctly. Hurrah for that. The graphics, they appear much like they did before, except more shaders and faster. Again, hurrah for that. Faster transistors in the CPU, faster graphics cores and more graphics cores in the GPU. That sounds like a good combination. That's quite enough talk. Let's actually see what this laptop can do. So I'm gonna to have to connect up my external hard drive that has my Steam library on and also a games controller which is immediately a problem. Naturally, we have wireless and Bluetooth, but in terms of physical connections, we have these two Thunderbolt 4 stroke USB 4 type C's, no ports anywhere else whatsoever. So only type C and they're very close together. Here we are on grid motorsport, this type C to A little hub is connecting my controller and I've got my Steam library on this port here. I do not, have the power connected. We're doing this on battery. Whoops. Lousy driving, but the gaming experience on the Tiger Lake there, pretty blooming good. And that was on battery power. Let's take a look at the AMD competition. The Lenovo IdeaPad Slim. The CPU is an AMD Ryzen 7 4800U, eight cores, 16 threads. Graphics, AMD Vega with 512 shaders. On paper, this outpaces the Tiger Lake without any difficulty. Same deal again, so the mains power is not connected. Over here I've got my hard drive for my Steam library and this is my controller. What could possibly go wrong? It turns out you can play games on integrated graphics whether you're using Intel or AMD. However, that's just a kind of a feeling. Let's put some charts on the screen and take a look at numbers. Before we start on the test results, a bit of housekeeping. Our Tiger Lake laptop at the moment has PL1 of 36 watts and PL2 of 64 watts which doesn't make a lot of sense when you consider the TDPs we've been discussing. However, this laptop has four modes that we can toggle through. We're currently in high performance mode. If we toggle to balanced, PL1 now changes to 28 watts. PL2 is still 64. Toggle again to silent and PL2 drops to 51 watts. PL1 is now 20 watts. Toggle again to the battery saving mode and PL1 drops to 15 watts. So this is effectively four laptops in one. We're gonna start with some CPU tests on these three laptops. The Ice Lake Razor Blade Stealth at 15 watts suffers badly, exactly as you'd expect. Tiger Lake on the other hand does well, particularly on high power settings. Extra power equals extra clock speed and that's a result. In Cinebench R20 multi-core, the Ryzen 7 does exactly as well as we would expect, i.e. very well. In single core, just look at Tiger Lake. That is performing very nicely. When it comes to graphics tests, we specifically want to use the IGP rather than the adding graphics in the razor blade, and that surprisingly gives a little bit of a problem. The razor blade Stealth 13 that we're working with has GTX 1650 add-in graphics. 
We fully understand that in the NVIDIA drivers you can disable the add-in graphics and force it to use the integrated graphics. However, the Razer seems to know better than we do. In some of our benchmarks, the Razer refused to use integrated graphics and switched instead to GTX 1650. So you'll note that a couple of our test results ignore the Razer for that very reason. In 3D Mark and in our games tests, the results actually surprised me. Ice Lake, not so good. We have a result from Brian's review of the white version of the Razor Blade Stealth, which is 28 watts, and even here the results aren't that great. In games, Ice Lake, not so good. Ryzen 7, surprisingly not that brilliant. Those Vega graphics, they're not really up to snuff. Tiger Lake, just look at those figures. Absolutely excellent results from the new Intel chip. Let's take a close look at how the Tiger Lake laptop is behaving in Cinebench R20. We are in balanced mode, which means the PL1 power limit is 28 watts, so it's going to shoot up to 64, then fall back. 28 watts is comparable with the most grunty isolate laptops we've previously seen. And here we go. CPU package power is up past 55 watts, heading towards 64. And it's already falling back, band of 50, temperature 95 degrees, clock speed 3.9 gigahertz dropping back. CPU temperatures climbed a couple of degrees up to 77, 78, presumably as the cooling system's got loaded up a bit. Temperature at the end there was 78 and it's now dropped way back to the high 50s and falling. And now we're going to bump up the power. We're in high performance mode. Reset that. So we're now looking at 41.5 watts PL1. Start running again. So initially bursting up to 40 something watts. CPU clock speed 3.9 gigahertz and dropping. So package power is now 41 and a half watts, CPU temperature 95. Temperatures in the 90s still, clock speed is 3.6 gigahertz all cores. And finish. We've learned a great deal looking at this 11th gen Intel Tiger Lake laptop. Clearly the new transistors allow the processor to run a higher clock speed than Ice Lake was capable. That is undeniable. As a consequence, it takes more juice. That might be the reason why Intel told us not to do battery tests. It's hard to say. But without a shadow of a doubt, this process 11th gen is in a different league to 10th gen, both in terms of speed and hence performance, but also in terms of power draw. On the plus side, cooling this processor should not be difficult with any competent package in a thin light laptop such as this MSI. We have no concerns on that front. The XE graphics in 11th Gen Tiger Lake are significantly better than the Ice Lake graphics. No argument about that whatsoever. 50% more shaders on the other hand, of course they're better and higher speed too. It is humorous to observe AMD has a better processor than Intel by dint of double the cores. Intel on the other hand has better graphics than AMD. So obviously we're heading towards the big question, are we likely to recommend that you buy Intel 11th Gen Tiger Lake? And that's a great big load of unknown. The reason being we have to first see Tiger Lake in action at whatever TDP the manufacturers uh, choose to uh, set the hardware at and what performance you get with the processor they actually supply. It might be 15 watts after all, it might be 30, it might be higher and that's going to make a monumental difference to the laptop as a whole. It's also going to affect cooling, noise levels and battery life. The idea of paying £1,500 for a laptop without an adding graphics chip or £1,800 with adding graphics or £1,000 for a not quite so sophisticated laptop without adding graphics but loads of CPU performance. What about the Tiger Lake MSI? Well, if it comes in at £1,000, I'm sure it'd be highly desirable. £1,500 would be a slightly different story. £2,000 would be painful. The pricing is going to matter. And so too is the question of adding graphics. We suspect this laptop will actually come with adding graphics because particularly in China PRC, it seems the consumers demand adding graphics. If they don't see in particular the NVIDIA logo, they're not interested. NVIDIA has recently launched their MX450 graphics chip. This sits, as the name suggests, above MX350 
and it adds PCI Express Gen 4 along with a bunch of extra performance. We haven't yet seen MX450 in action, but according to Notebook Check, the performance takes it above Tiger Lake. MX350 sits below this integrated graphics, MX450 above. It's going to depend to a huge extent on the configuration of the laptops that go on sale. However, we are confident Intel is going to give the laptop manufacturers the tools they require to actually do the job. It makes you wonder, if Intel had delivered 10 nanometer on time, perhaps the next Apple laptops would have a Tiger inside. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell button and subscribe. Head over to kitguru.net to read our news and reviews.